to the Outback Wool Shed. Did 
don't want me to say all that, do you? You do? Okay. Casper here just wants me to tell you that they all write and they rave about the stockman of Grover alone. The one that's best. He can bark and bite. The stockman and Grover, they're only men, but a good dog. He's worth at least ten of them. You are a good dog, aren't you, mate? Go on, off you go. Okay, let's hear it for the dog! Now, the other stockman and I, we're going to show you a sheep being shown. But first, we have to get changed. Now, you're probably wondering why we're changing our boots. These ones here, they're designed for riding horses, not for shearing sheep. These ones here, however, they're called bag boots or moccasins, which most shearers do wear. The shearers of old originally made and wore these bag boots so they could say they're good walking boots to travel from shed to shed. Yeah, well, we'll admit, they're not the prettiest pair of boots we've ever worn, but they're certainly a lot more comfortable to shearing than what those riding boots are. Now, I think I should also tell you, all the sheep we will be shearing here today are merinos, the finest wool-producing animal in the world, but also the most difficult to shear. Now you will notice on this sheep, which I will be blade shearing, we've removed some of the wool from around the belly area here, and also up here around its head. This has been done to make this sheep resemble the original merino sheep that Elizabeth and John MacArthur first brought to Australia. Since that time, wool producers have bred the sheep in such a way that they've increased in size by about 60%, and the wool, it now grows much longer and a lot denser. They've also bred a lot more skin on the merino sheep. The theory being, the more skin the sheep has, the more wool it's going to produce. And all of these things combined have result in what you see here today. That's the modern Australian merino. And we do have a fine example of a modern Australian merino ram over here on the wall, and we call that bloke Charles. Now, while we're shearing, you're going to notice these big flaps of skin like this around the necks of the sheep. And to get an idea of how big these flaps of skin can be, just have a close look there at Charles's neck. But these are only half the problem for our shearers, because along with these flaps of skin here, the body of the sheep is covered with hundreds of tiny little wrinkles. Anyway, I think it's about time we show you exactly how we do shear a sheep. And right now, I want to introduce you to an old shearing mate of mine, Gigi Greg. He'll be sharing with us here today. G'day! <laughs> Come on, Greg. You call those things their shears? Yeah. Those are shears. <laughs> now, that machine thing that Greg will be using actually took the place of these blades back in about 1888. But I don't know, I still reckon these are better than any machine. <laughs> You're having a lend yourself there, old fella. You reckon? I reckon. <laughs> what, do you want to make some sort of race out of this then? A race? Yeah, a race. In front of all of these people. Oh, now I thought we'd leave it till they all go home. <laughs> what, you better? It'll save me embarrassing you in front of them all. <laughs> right here, right now, and we'll let all of these people witness it. Oh. Well, you get yourself ready. Tell you what, that, as soon as he has got a hundred years of technology on his side, how about I get all of you out there today to say go on the count of three, okay? One, two, three. Go! No, Chloe, hang on, pull up, that. wait a minute. Mate, I've just started in a race, if you don't mind. But I haven't. What do you mean you haven't? Well, about giving me a bit of power first. Oh, I see, you want me to turn your power on. <laughs> Why have I got a turn on? I don't need it. Oh, come on, Rory. There you go. Oh, okay, then. Are you ready now? Well, I'm only waiting for you now. Good. Is everybody else ready? 
He doesn't sound much like it, does it, Greg? Let's give him one more go at that, eh? Is everybody else ready? Yeah. That's better. Now remember, on the count of three, you say go. We'll get this race started and we'll soon see who the best shearer is in the outback wool <laughs> Oi! Get on with it. One, two, three. Go! In Australia, a shearer can work all year round if he wants to. Before we moved this side of the mountain, we used to start work the first working Monday in January and knock off around about Christmas Eve. When we'd start work, we'd be way up on the Queensland border somewhere. But by Christmas Eve, we would have worked our way right down through New South Wales onto the Victorian border. Because we do shear all year round in Australia, we shear in all sorts of seasonal conditions from temperatures in excess of 50 degrees Celsius, or if you like, that's 120 degrees Fahrenheit, down to the sub-zero temperatures of the mountain winters down south. Hey, you going over there, Greg. <laughs> hey, Laurie, I'm only out of tea now, mate. They're knocking off 5.30 in the evening. On an average day, a good shearer, you'll shear around about 140 feet. Top shearer though, he'll shear in excess of 200 sheep every day. Shearers are only paid by the amount of sheep they shear, and at a rate of around about $1.53 per head. That's a lot of incentive to become a top shearer. And this place's starting to catch up here a bit. I'm going to have to get stuck into this.
as a marathon runner running one marathon. So they are, in fact, putting their body through the equivalent four marathons a day, five days a week. So you can see the need for cheerers to be very fit and as dedicated as an Olympic athlete. Certainly a cheerer needs to be as competitive as an Olympic athlete because every day the race is on trying to see who is the fastest and the best. And speaking of which, I've got a lot of work ahead of me here, so I'm going to get stuck into it. Imagination. Hey, Vic. 
Or did you just pull a skipping rod? <laughs> How's that? Imagination. Maybe. Some fathers have no imagination. Oh. Imagination. And you're laughing. Don't you know how much their wits can hurt? They leave a big red mark. I'm going to show them the red mark. Hey! Oh! You don't want to see it, do you? Don't you want to see the red mark? No. No, no, they don't. They don't? No, mate, no. Remember what happened last time? What's that in mind anyway? Well, I thought we might have had a whip cracking competition. Whip cracking? Hey, that's not a bad idea. Why don't you get your whip, get right here and show these folks your best shot. Best shot, eh? Yeah. Best shot. Right. You want to make a whip first, mate? Uh, uh, I just hang on the little box. Oh. Right, I need your best shot. <laughs>